Hello friends and welcome to See Joy Yoga. Um, for any of my friends who uh, follow Grandma Luna, I call her, um, the moon cycles, we had a new moon in Sagittarius yesterday and Sagittarius rules the lower body and particularly the hips. And so this is gonna be a practice similar to what I did for myself yesterday. Um, if you don't follow the moon, it's okay. You're still gonna get really wonderful things happening in your hips. Before we move, I just want to do one little bit of lecture. You know, I, I'm, I don't believe in just leading you through things. I believe in teaching you about your body so that you can learn more about your body and become acquainted. It's just who I am, yeah? So, hips. If hips are tight, you overuse your spine. If you overuse your spine, you end up with some pain and discomfort often. So, you know, if you're feeling, oh my gosh, my low back is just really sore, not always, but it might be that you have really tight hips and therefore are overusing your low back, right? Um, another uh, uh, platform, when you have an injury or, or issues or, or tenderness, soreness going on, I mean, if someone punched you in your low back, yeah, that's what it was. You just got punched in the low back. But otherwise, if your low back is really really sensitive and hurting, chances are really great. It's coming from the platform above or below. So we start to pay attention to that, right? That is to say that not only can it be low back or mid back that causes, that gets some of the um, discomfort and pain from tight hips, but if my hips are really tight and I can't externally rotate my leg and I'm sitting cross-legged a lot, my knee joint is taking the brunt of that. And so maybe my knee starts to take um, pain and discomfort from the immobility of my hips. So we're going to see if we can't get a little bit more ability, more, <laughs> more mobility and flexibility, but you know, also what muscles aren't firing and what muscles can we use that will help support this whole puzzle of the body a little more. So that's kind of where we're headed today. Sitting up nice and tall. You can be in a chair, you can be cross-legged, you can be on a block, on a coffee table. I give you permission to be on your coffee table, right? But go ahead and sit up nice and tall. Find that length in the spine and close your eyes. Whatever points of contact you have in the floor, right? Against the earth, I'll say. Even if that means it's your chair, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to include that as the floor and the earth today. Yeah, anything that has contact right now. Notice it. Maybe, maybe visualizing your roots growing down. And maybe, you know, you're thinking of a shaft of light that's connecting you down below or cords or chains or whatever it is for you. Awesome. But imagine yourself rooting down and the more you root down, see if that can't correlate to that long spine without effort, without rigidity. Or as some teachers call it, as the Yoga Sutras call it actually, that effortless effort. Check into the muscular body. Yes, some of our muscles are helping keep us tall. But there's a lot of muscles that we don't need to use right now. So just check. And if they're being used, no worries. Just let them go. And then drop down into your hips. It's so funny, sitting cross-legged is called uh, sukhasana, right? And sukhasana translates as ease pose. Some call it, people call it easy pose or pose of ease. I don't find it easy to sit in that pose at all, nor comfortable for to do for too long <laughs> because of some things going on in my hips. Doesn't mean I'm a bad yogi or a bad person. But as I notice, my right hip, my right buttocks bone specifically is not grounding as much as my left, which shortens my right side body, right? We, maybe you feel different things happening in your pelvis, tightness, restriction, openness, pain, discomfort. And go ahead and open those eyes. And we're going to come on down and lie down on our back to begin the 
the uh, movement portion of class. I was going to say physical, but we already started the physical, let's be honest. Have a block on standby. If you don't have a block, I will just have you work with an imaginary block, and that will be all right. No big whoop. No reason to not do the class, I'll tell you that, right? So grab that block and put it on the low setting or your imaginary block, and go ahead and put that block in between the thighs. Now, I like to drop mine down as far as I can towards my pubic bone. It's A, more comfortable, and B, gives me a little more information in my pelvic floor and the TA or the, the corset that where we're going to work. And let the arms just come out Shavasana style. Soft shoulders, soft jaw, soft tongue, right? Let the whole upper body be super duper soft. <coughs> Pardon me. And the work we're about to do here is pretty subtle, so don't go Suzanne Summers thigh master on me, okay? Take an inhale, and with an exhale, you're just going to really gently move the block, your legs, sorry, your thighs into your block or your imaginary block. So my legs don't really move because the block prevents it, but I start to engage that inner line, right? And stay in on it if you can. And hopefully, maybe we start to engage the pelvic floor. We start to feel that corset just firing up a little bit. But if I bring my awareness to the back side of my body, my low back still has its natural curve. I'm not flattening my spine at all, right? So it's not a Whoa! action into that block. Now go ahead and release that. And now me talking a little less, but it's the same work. Exhale, move into the block, just nice and gentle and just start to really zone in. Release that on an inhale. What do you feel when you do this, right? Is your anus squeezing? Don't let it. Are your psoas turning on? Ask them not to. And soften. Maybe you're feeling really like, I mean, you're trying to do all this not from the thighs, but you're doing all of this by pulling the abdomen down to the floor. And you can keep going even though I'm talking, right? And then the next time you move in on the block, you're gonna stay in on the block. Now being in on that block, you're gonna try to keep that, right, as much as you can. Try not to push the feet down. The feet are not actively pushing right now. And without the feet actively pushing, I want you to try to find your front abdominals in order to pull the belly down to flatten the low back out into the floor. But again, if you feel your feet pushing down, try to prevent that from happening so that it doesn't come from the feet, but it comes from the abdominals, right? This is what I mean by isolating, being like, whoa, I don't even know how to fire that stuff. Some people it's like, yeah, no problem, what? And some of us are like, I, I don't know how to do that. And go ahead and bring the pelvis to neutral, still moving into our block. We're going to go ahead and we're going to let our frontal hip points start to pick up and we'll overarch our low back just a little bit or what would be cow pose, right? But again, I'm not pushing my feet down and I'm not going to crank my psoas to do that. I'm trying to find that more through that abdominal area. And slowly moving into the block gently, I'm going to pull down and I'm going to try to flatten my low back and I'm not going to use my feet to do that. And then frontal hip points, they're going to rock up towards the sky. And I'm going to overarch my low back just a little bit. Nothing major. I'm not going crazy with this, right? One more time. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my abdominals. I'm going to try to use some of those things right around the hip, right front of the belly to flatten my spine. And now I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't find a little action from the back side that's going to help that back over arch without my psoas doing all the work. You can even put your fingers in there and ask them to release if they're grabbing on and come back to neutral. I've worked with an awful lot of bodies at this point in time, yes, in classes, but in my private practice, I've worked with a lot of bodies. So as in a majority of the bodies love to do the work of the core, they love to do it. Let the block come out and put the block off to the side, right? And so the next piece that we're going to do is just a little bit of mobility to release that. We'll come back to work and then we'll come back and forth. Yeah. Bring the knees in and put your hands on your kneecaps and circle your knees together. <clears throat> and go ahead and go the other way. Where do you feel this in your body? Again, I can tell you where a lot of people tell me they do or where I do personally, but be curious what's happening and why would I ask you to do this? And then coming back to neutral, the knees are going to V out away from each other, move forward and together end. So the knees are still circling, but now they're circling in opposite directions. And again, how does that change your experience? Go the other direction. Why would I ask you to do this?
or why might I? <laughs> Go ahead and tee the arms out to the side. Keep the knees high initially, right? And we're gonna move over to the right and we're just gonna rock back and forth. So it's not about getting down to the ground. It's just a really gentle rock across your sacrum and your low back. And yep, we are starting to twist, you betcha. And then the next time that you go over to the right, you could put the block in if you want, but I want you to, I want to, you to imagine you have a block between your thighs, glue your knees together, and this time you'll lift your left hip even a little further with that glued action. And as I move to the left, I'm gonna really work my legs together, and then suddenly my right hip reaches a little further than it would if I was not efforting in that way. And do that a couple of times. So just trying to get into the side waist a little bit more. The next time we come over to the right, we're just going to let the legs come to the ground. Knees can totally come away from you if they'd like to. You could put a block underneath the legs so that you bring the floor up to your legs. All of it's awesome. You're going to take your right hand and put it in your left hip crease, and you're going to move your left hip forward first and a little to the right. Yeah? And as you find that line, it may or may not feel good to reach your left arm kind of back and out a little to the left, just looking for that full diagonal line in the body. And if you want to leave the right hand out of it, you can once you find it, but I like to give that extra little bit of oomph with my hand so that I get that extra length in that side body. And bring the left arm back out, bring the knees back up, and just rock a couple of times, maybe gluing the hips together if you want that slightly more active version. If not, don't. Next time you go over to the left, you're gonna let those knees come on down to the ground, moving the knees away or supporting, bringing the floor up to the knees. And then the left hand's gonna come in that right hip crease and you're gonna push the right hip forward first and just a little to the left and find that length in this lower body. That right arm might reach back, but for me it's a little bit out towards the right corner of my mat for me to find that diagonal line where I get the most benefit. And taking a breath from there. And since we're already over this, actually no, roll onto your back. I'm gonna add one piece in. Left foot on the ground, interlace behind the right thigh, and let's push the right heel up to the sky. And let's just say hi real quick to the back of the leg, circling the right foot, getting that lymphatic fluid flowing, move the other direction. A lot of other things happening too, but that's, uh, I, try to, I try to get myself an inversion at least once a day during cold and flu seasons particularly seasonal transitions. And then we're gonna go into the IT band, right? Hip stays heavy, come across the body just a few inches, and then pull the leg towards the head side of the mat if you feel like you could use a little more. And just really reach through that heel to say hi. And bring that leg back, put that foot down, and left leg in, interlace, push the heel up, pause for a moment, just let the back of the leg open. And then circling the left foot a few times, Noticing what's happening in that ankle joint, in the sole of the foot, whatever's going on. Go ahead and go the other way. And even though you can't feel it, your lymphatic fluid is draining back towards your heart. Yay! We want that to happen. Now, IT band, left leg over to the right, just about three to five inches. And then again, if you need more, don't go further to the right, but rather pull it to the head side of the mat, keeping the leg long and keeping the left hip heavy. Breathing into the left side of that left leg. Come back to center, foot down. Let's come up with a little activity. We're gonna grab the backs of the knees and rock yourself up. If you need a couple of rocks, totally fine. You can either cross the legs and just rock over the legs or swoosh them out to the side and let's come to hands and knees. Supporting knees if that's what's right for your body. It is what's right for mine. <laughs> This 40, almost eight-year-old body's like, well, I like a little padding, please. Inhale, reaching the chest forward. So now we were on the ground and we were doing this motion, right? Exhale, pull the belly in. So instead of pushing down today, we'll add into that, right? But for, first start to pull the belly up like we were doing on the ground. Use your front abdominals to round the spine up. And then now push down for a little extra oomph. And then go ahead and frontal hip points moving down to the ground and again find the position and then push down into the ground and how does that change your shape once you're in? So that's the pattern, right? Today we're pulling the abdominals up. Abdominals are going to start you and move you into cat and then once you're in, 
push the ground away and get a little whatever else that brings. I'm not even going to say a little more, a little something else. Moving into cow and then push into the ground and notice what happens. And one more time. You know the drill well enough by now. It's just a different way to play, that's all. Now, keep your cow, but you're now gonna let your ribs kind of move over to the right and a little up, doing little semi-circles or half circles, and then over to the left and up. Do that a couple of times. And then the next time you go to the right, you might circle it all the way around, up to cat, over to the left and back down, and then reverse the direction on that. If that doesn't feel right, just keep with your half circles. Do that one more time, full circle to the right. And if you're not quite on my timing, that's totally fine. And to the left, pull the belly muscles up two today. And coming back to center. Now curl your right toes under and reach your right leg back. As you push the heel back, if your wrists start to get sensitive, come to fists or come to forearms, right? Find that low belly toning up and move the thighs into imaginary blocks. I would put a block next to each of your thighs if I could right now and ask you to move into them. And then keep your leg where it is. Don't lift the leg. Lift the left arm first, right? Push the left foot down, the right hand down. And then maybe the left leg, right, Jiminy Christmas. The left arm is forward, lift that first, and then maybe the right arm joins the party. Right leg. <laughs> Do what, I, what I'm doing, not what I'm saying. Now pull your belly up, round your spine. I should see your spine move before I ever see your limbs move in together. Today, anyway and send that all the way out. Maybe you just work the leg, maybe you just work the arm. Pull the belly up, pull the abdominals up, 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 then bring the limbs together. They are the very last thing today. Send it out and set that down. One more side and then we're out of the wrists. Curl the left toes under, but keep the toes on the ground. Right straight left leg. Push the right shin and the left hand down and reach the right arm forward. So just getting into it slightly different than I often coach, right? Lengthen the body. Now maybe the left leg lifts, maybe it doesn't. Now in order to do the crunches today, don't bring your limbs together. Pull your belly up, pull your belly up, pull your belly up. You're in cat. Now bring your nose and your knee and your elbow together. Or elbow and knee, whatever. Send it out or just the arm or just the leg. <laughs> pull the belly up and round. Ay, ay, ay. I apologize for my verbal blah, blah, blah today. Reach it all the way out and come on down. Child's pose. Knees wide, big toes touch, buttocks down, forehead to or towards the ground. And I like to make a pillow for my beautiful little head sometimes. I can bring my forehead to the ground. But sometimes it's nice to have more room on all sides of my neck. And especially as someone who I used to have a reverse cervical curve, and now I have a zero, zero degrees, right? I don't go reverse or the way we traditionally go. So I, I don't always like my head to hang a lot lower than my chest and emphasize the curve of the upper back. Stretch those arms out, planting your palms down. As you plant your palms and your finger pads down and the forearms lift up and the triceps rotate in the usual suspects, right? Take another breath from here. If you're ready to go up into downward dog, hold your horse's buckle. There's benefit here too. It's different and it's really good for you. Now starting to move up into downward facing dog. When you get there, feel free to do any little movements that might feel nice in your body. And if you need stillness, just go right into the stillness. We'll take three breaths. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Last breath, friends. Inhale. Exhale. And then you're going to walk your hands back to your feet or your feet a little forward if you need, whatever you need to come into a forward fold. Hands on the shins, reach the chest forward. 
and exhale fold now bend your knees a lot bend your knees so much that you might get your ribs a little closer to your thighs you might even be able to lie on them that's not the end all be all right and then come forward again keep the knees bent but reach the chest forward again and when you roll down try to roll down as if it would be the very bottom of your belly that would touch the thighs first and then the top belly and then the ribs and then the boobs or the chest right and soften down in and this is even if you're not actually touching the thighs right grab your elbow points and soften in of course if you have um herniated discs or bulging discs you would not do forward folds like this you would come out of it come up to standing or come to that halfway point with your long spine and we'll meet you in a moment put your other forearm in front now try to keep the position that you have right now between your ribs and your thighs whether they're touching or not that distance hopefully doesn't change one iota push your heels down so much that your buttocks bones start to reach up i could say straighten your legs but i think that's a really unintelligent way to move <laughs> not unintelligent just not as intelligent as we could be right so again pushing the heels down the middle of the heels reaching the buttocks bones up trying to keep our ribs and our thighs together and the microphone is directly next to my mouth, so sorry if it sounds like I'm shouting at you. And hands on the shins, reach the chest forward. Halfway up, hands on the hips, elbows up. Whew. Come on up, coming up to the top of the mat. You can have blocks on standby. Inhale, reach the arms forward and up today. And exhale, go ahead and fold forward. Inhale, hands on the shins, chest forward. Now bend your knees and plant your hands, and we're gonna step that left foot back first. Right, and then here we are in a high lunge. Hopefully the right ankle is underneath the right knee-ish, but obviously if you need to be higher or less of a bend, you know, take, take care of your body, most definitely. But we do get usually the most support if the knee is over the ankle, right? Now I want you to traction your feet together. What do I mean by that? My feet don't move there on a sticky mat, but I'm gonna pull my right heel back as I pull the ball mounds of my left feet forward. And as those two things happen, you might feel how you start to feel action in the inner groin. Don't go crazy with it, right? The pelvic floor and your TA, your corset. Now, keeping that, the tractioning of the feet together, reach your right arm forward, right? Don't let that right hip move out. Heel back, fingers forward. By the way, we're doing a lot of cross patterning. I'm just not pointing it out as much today. And bring that right hand down. Bring the left knee down, uncurl the toes, and inhale, bring the arms forward into your low lunge, coming up, right? Moving the hips back enough that we can find that neutral pelvis. I'm neither tucked nor tilted. Soft shoulders. Now interlace your hands if it's available and reach your palms up to the sky. And then if it's available, balance wise, you're gonna lean over to the right and really push through the heel of that left hand particularly. Really push that left shin and knee down. And inhale up, bring the hands down. You're gonna walk your right foot towards the right edge of your mat, bringing both hands inside the right leg. Inhale and reach the chest forward and then start to lay the hips down and forward before you just dive down with your chin and really start to move into that, right? And then see if the upper body can start to follow down and maybe you come on to blocks on high, maybe you stay on hands the whole time, maybe blocks on low or medium, whatever works for you. Maybe you're all the way on the ground, awesome sauce. Right? But I'll always encourage people, notice how the left hip really easily moves down for many of us. Can your right hip also move down? Can you encourage the right hip to move down? And then just so we're not hanging in our joints here, especially my flexible friends, traction your right heel back to the back of your mat as you traction your left knee forward to the front of your mat. Take an inhale, exhale, softening in. Maybe coming to the pinky edge of the right foot, letting that right knee move away from you. You could even do a little twist towards the right leg, 
right hand on the thigh and don't get cranky and go pushy pushy right but just really gently lengthen that inner groin so i'm i'm simultaneously moving it gently out and rotating it kind of like we talk about when we do external rotation and also lengthening that knee forward yeah and bring that foot down come on up both hands down to support you coming out you're just going to let that right leg whoop back behind you and come into a downward facing dog whoop them up breathe what's going on in there how are your hips feeling They probably feel very different from one side to the next as we're doing very asymmetrical things right now. We need to get that left foot forward. So we're gonna inhale the left leg into the air behind you, square hip. Now pull your belly up and round your spine into cat. You really use your abdominals as you bring the knee towards the nose. Now look forward, push the ground away, pull everything up to try to step into that space. Ha, 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 right? And we're gonna bring those blocks in and here we are in our high lunge. Again, I'm not saying you have to be at a 90 degree angle. I know some people have knee sensitivities, but you do wanna try and have that ankle underneath that knee usually. So it might look a little more like this for you, right? Just trying our darndest to support that knee as much as we can. Now traction action. Left heel, traction's back. As the ball mounds of the right foot, traction forward. Really feel that inner groin, that pelvic floor, and your low abdomen turn on. Now keep that left hip back as you reach the left arm forward. The right heel pushes back, the left hip reaches back, but the left hand reaches forward. Now bring that hand down, bring the knee down. We don't lose the spine, we keep all that stuff going on, right? Uncurl the right toes, reach the arms forward to come up into Anjaneyasana. Come back far enough that you can start to find the pelvis. Again, you might traction that left heel back and that right knee forward, and you might feel that start to come into the pelvis and help you on that plane, right? Interlace, maybe other index finger, pushing palms up, and if it's in your realm today, you're gonna lean to the left and really push through the heel of the right hand as you push, push the right knee down. Breathing. Let this be just as much an exploration and a noticing of what's happening as it is you actually doing things, right? Come back through center, hands come down. Why would I ask you to do these things? Bring that left foot out. Is your body telling you, ooh, a little less, a little less, please? Both hands inside, oh, a little more, right? Inhale, reach the chest forward. Again, notice my body today. Just like we did earlier, I'm gonna let my hips come down and then my low belly and then my upper belly and then my ribs until I find the position that suits my body the best, right? Whatever support that is for you. Hands, bent elbows, on forearms, on different heights, on the blocks. And breathing here, the right hip in my body doesn't really have a ton of problem going down but my left hip, I'd like to encourage my left hip to join the party, and I'm gonna stabilize so I'm not hanging in my joints by pulling my left heel back and tractioning my right knee forward, right? And as those two pieces, like scissors, move towards one another, suddenly I have support in my ligaments and my tendons and my joints. Now maybe the ball mound of, uh, uh, sorry, you roll onto the pinky edge of the left foot and you can leave that right elbow grounded or come onto the hand. My left hand's gonna come onto that femur bone. And again, I can literally try to rotate it in the socket or if I put pressure on it, it's not just pushing it away from me, it's lengthening the inner groin through the inner knee. And I can do a little baby twist there as I move into that action or I don't if it's not right for my body and bring that foot down, bring the hands down, pushing up. We're gonna step forward. So you're gonna bring that left foot back in, blocks on the side, curl the right toes under, and you're gonna push off of that right foot to try to bring that forward. Inhale, reaching the chest forward. Now, go ahead and bend your knees, almost about what you did at the beginning of class. And when you roll down, roll down the lower belly, the mid belly, the ribs, right, the chest. And then from there, you're gonna soften in. You can grab your elbow points. 
Try to really gently, really slowly keep your ribs and your thighs wherever they are together wise, right? And then as you push the heels down and reach the buttocks bones up, again, here we are in hamstring land. And it may feel exactly the same as it did just a little bit ago, but maybe this is starting to shift and change as well. We're just bringing discernment in. Hands on the shins, reaching the chest forward. And folding in. Hands on the hips, elbows up, reaching the chest forward to come up. Exhale. Noticing those hippies and what's going on in there. Okay. Now we're going to go into crescent. We're not going to hold it too long, but we're going to add that bit of strength that we did on the other side in. So if you have something on your mat, yeah, if you know you're going to bring your knee down, leave it there. But otherwise, if you're going to try crescent, bring it off to the side. Inhale, arms forward and up today. Exhale and fold. Inhale, chest forward. Bending the knees, planting the hands. This time the right foot's going to go back first. Bend the left knee, get long, get strong. Traction the legs, the heel, left heel back, right arm for, uh, right toes forward, and then inhale the arms forward and up to come up into your crescent. Hands can totally come to the hips, of course they can. And I always bend my back knee so I don't compromise my low back. That's my body, otherwise that is the pattern I will do every single time. I'm 20 years in and I still do it, right? Without awareness. And I might reach that heel back a little more. I can either reach the heel back and straighten my front leg and then I can get a straight back leg and my low back's not compromised. But if I bend that knee in, that left knee, I've got to bend that back knee a little bit for me. So what do you need? I don't know. Interlace, push the palms up, lean over to the left, push through the right heel of the hand, push the right heel back. Not that it has to move further, it's just actively in opposition. Come back through center, bringing the hands down. Stepping back to a plank, if you'd like just a little bit of heat. This is getting kind of to the end of our heat and our strength portion, so judge that accordingly. Moving back to downward dog. Breathing. Inhale the right leg into the air behind you. The first thing I'd love you to do is to pull your abdominals up and round your spine and then come forward to plank, bringing the nose and the knee together. Now push the floor away and pull your belly up even more to float the right foot forward or push it or forklift it. Get really tall in the body, long in the spine, I should say. Push the left heel back, reach the chest forward. But even as the left heel pushes back, Pull the left ball mounds forward, pull the right heel back. Find that you're not hanging in your hip joints. Strengthen the area as the same time we stretch it, right? And then inhale, reach the arms forward and up. And again, play with that balance. Maybe the back knee bent is what helps you find your neutral pelvis and your spine long, right? Maybe unbending that front knee a little bit and working the back leg towards straight. So where is it that you wanna work from that you feel the benefit in your pelvis without compromising the spine. Again, tight hips. My psoas is really tight, and so I overuse my low back. Yeah? Don't do what I do. Interlace, push the palms up, leaning over to the right potentially, pushing your left heel back, pushing your left uh, 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 heel of your hand forward and up to the right as your left heel pushes back, your foot heel, right? And coming back to center, bringing the hands down, stepping forward to the top of the mat. Now you're just gonna walk your feet out wide. We're gonna move down through a squat, so if that makes you wanna put a block or a chair or a coffee table behind you or underneath your buttocks, please do. Feet can turn out a little bit. Inhale, reach the chest forward. And then from here, we're gonna start to squat down. Remember when we did the lunge and our foot was wide? We're doing it now on both sides. So it's the same, some of the same um, movements in the hips here. Now you might just rock a little bit from side to side. Feel that out in your hips, please don't hurt yourself. Now we're gonna do a twist. You're gonna reach the right hand. I have my right arm come in as much as I can, right? And then I reach my right hand wherever the heck it touches the ground, sweet. And then I'm gonna reach my left arm up and over to the left. And now as I sink my left buttocks bone down and back, I'm gonna lengthen that left arm on the diagonal, bicep next to ear-ish, kinda like when we did that twist laying on the ground in the beginning. 
reach the left arm back up, bring that hand down, come inside the leg. Left arm reaches over wherever it makes contact, awesome. Right arm's gonna reach up and you might just stay with that right arm up and out. You might think about your right buttocks reaching down and back even as you reach the right arm away on a diagonal. Reach that right arm out to the side again. Bring it down and for one breath, let's bring our thumbs to our heart, our heart to our thumbs and lengthen the spine. You remember that Suzanne Summers block? Don't Suzanne Summers it, but meaning move into an imaginary block between your thighs right now and see what that does. How does that change the experience? Bring the buttocks down. We're gonna come all the way onto our backs. And just pause for one moment right there. So, we started class seated, it's true, but then we came down and one of the very first things we did was we had our feet on the ground with our knees bent and our arms and upper body in Shavasana. I'm wondering if anything has changed in your body. Be curious. See if you can give words to it. And hopefully not judgmental words, this is good, this is bad, but rather my right hip is feeling this, the outer hip is this, the, you know, and the hips, I say hips, but Jiminy Christmas, my inner groin is totally different than my, my out, I'm gonna call it outer groin, than the front of my psoas, than my glutes, than my, right? So see if you can start to identify different bits and pieces. And just become aware of them in your body, start to make contact have a relationship with them. Bring the knees into the chest. Eyes can stay open or, or can stay closed or they can open. Maybe rock a little bit from right to left. And then I'm gonna suggest that we put our feet down on the ground, walk our feet wide and TV arms out, windshield wiper. Let the knees come over to the right. You might just stay exactly like this. You might put your right foot on your left thigh Think of not moving down, but it moving forward. Or if I grabbed your thigh and I rotate it down towards the ground, that would be internal rotation. So we're looking at internal rotation in that left thigh bone right now. Maybe that left arm reaches back on that diagonal towards the left kind of back corner of the room. Maybe it doesn't. Bring the right foot down, inhale the knees up, exhale the knees over to the left. And just get comfy for a second, right? Maybe, but maybe not. <clears throat> maybe that right foot comes up. And again, I don't just wanna pull that knee down. I wanna lengthen that thigh forward. And then if I put my hand on your thigh and I literally rotated your inner, uh, your right femur, right, into internal rotation. And then reach that right arm back on the diagonal, maybe, maybe not. So you could stay teed out with the left foot on the ground the whole dang time. Bring that arm back out, bring that left foot down. Everybody bring their knees up. You can either simply let the knees lean into each other in what's called constructive rest pose, or you can extend your legs out long. You can cover up with a blanket. Let the arms come down a little bit. Close the eyes and start to settle into Shavasana. And even though this is the shorter version of the Zoom class, and you're like, I know, but it's gonna be like 45 minutes. I wanted to still make something with a little bit of length because when we're talking about the hips, the hips have some of the biggest, strongest, burliest, right? Muscles in the whole body. By design, they need to be stable, right? There's some stability because it's uh, uh, our main place that we move from. But that also means that if we really want to get in there and start to change some of those patterns, open some things up or teach other things to join, it takes a little bit of time.
every time the mind gets <clears throat> busy. Bring it right on back to scanning the body or bringing awareness to the breath. And then just for these last few moments together, bring your awareness to the nostrils, the base of the nostrils, where the air enters and exits. And I'm gonna talk us through some pranic movement. That's the life force, right? So we're all intelligent humans. We know the breath comes in through the nose, up to the sinus cavity, down through the back of the throat, into the lungs, right? But I'm gonna talk about the prana movement, the pranic movement. So inhale, and imagine the prana, the life force, coming in through the nostrils and going right up between the eyebrows. And when you exhale, follow that. Imagine that going from between the eyebrows down through the nostrils and out of the body. Inhaling into the nostrils all the way up to the third eye. Exhaling third eye down and out through the nostrils. So keep doing that, just following the prana. And the next time that you breathe in, right, and you follow that prana up to the third eye, just leave it at the third eye. You'll still continue to exhale and inhale. You'll go back to regular breathing, but you're gonna leave your awareness right between the eyebrows. And again, in yoga, we call this the third eye energy center or the Ajna chakra. And this is where they say our inner guru sits, right? Our inner knowing. So maybe as you move throughout your day, if it helps you to come to this point in your body, if you come up with a question that you don't know the answer to or that you need to sit with for a moment so you can make sure you give the correct answer that's right for you, this is a great place to tune into for discernment. Maybe wiggle fingers or toes or stretch the face muscles. Feet on the ground if and when you're ready. Rolling through the fetal position. My friends with low back issues, there's always the one where you send your hands and use your elbows to help you up. And come on up. And you don't have to go to the place where you originally started class, but if you happen to find yourself in that place, you might just tune into the whole body. It's true, but you know, we did an awful lot in that lower body. And one of the things that I mentioned at the beginning was when our hips are tight, often the pain of that, the discomfort of that will go up into our low back or maybe down into our knees, et cetera. So just checking in to those relationships. Bring the palms together at the heart, inhale. Exhale, bowing the head in. And just taking a moment of gratitude. Thank you, thank you, sweet, sweet hips. Namaste. And thank you for joining me, and I'm glad you're willing to do a slightly longer class than some of the shorter quickies. Um, I think it'll be super beneficial for your pelvis, your hips, your low back, your whole lower body, really. Be well.